Hey Redeemer, just finished up the fourth service today and a real praise of a morning if you ask me because we got to preach the gospel and study and analyze what the Bible says about being a faithful Christian. So Peter in this text says, and I'll read it to you one more time just so uh, you review it and then I want to answer a really tough question that came up and doesn't always uh, get covered in the sermons that we do. He says, uh, though you've never seen him, you love him. Though you don't now see him, you believe. And you believe in him and rejoice with joy. It's inexpressible. It's filled with glory. And then he says, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. We talked about the mark of a faithful Christian and the joy that should be coming out of our lives. And the question then begs, right? So am I supposed to be faking it when I'm not feeling it? Here's what I would put in front of you, humbly but clearly. I don't want to lie to you and I don't want to kind of fluff this either. Joy should be coming out of your life. If it's not, there's some big questions you should ask. Are you as mature as you think you are? Uh, are you as faithful a Christian as you may think you are? That's not to guilt or shame you. That's to push you towards the cross if that's not happening. People say, well, uh, I don't feel like praising. Yeah, well, it's a choice to praise. I don't feel very joyful. Well, joy isn't just about feelings. Joy is a choice. I choose joy. But the third factor I do want to put in front of you, and that's where I would have the audacity to say you're maybe not as mature as you think you are, is the fruit of the Spirit includes joy. So shouldn't, if the Holy Spirit is in us, our lives be emanating joy, not just when things are good, but even when they're not good? The answer is yes. According to the Bible, joy should be coming out. It's not faking it. Here's what I would say. It's faithing it. I have faith and therefore I still have joy. Yes, pain is real. Yes, cancer is real. Yes, poverty and brokenness and persecution is real. However, joy is also real. So in all your striving to be faithful as a Christian and in all your analyzing of all that God is doing, don't ever forget that we wake up every morning as Christians with a choice. Will I count it all joy? Will I have joy? Will I praise God in the midst of pain? Or will I lean into my negative feelings, my frustrations, and my anger towards God? The answer is we should always choose joy. And lastly, I'll say this. I think this is part of the reason why God gave us to each other. Because when I don't feel very joyful, someone comes along and reminds me, choose joy. When I'm in my pain and my brokenness, someone comes alongside me and kind of picks me up under their arm, and I then begin to feel the love and the care of the Christian church and the community, and suddenly I'm reminded of my joy. So it's not just the hope of heaven and waiting for that to have joy. It's today, it's now, it's available to you in Christ, and so choose joy.